thank you, uh, Mr Gray. I beg to move that this House has considered the taxation of beer and pubs. I'm delighted to have uh, secured another important debate covering the brewing and pubs uh, sector in the UK. And this debate is particularly timely, coming on the day when the all-party parliamentary beer group will be holding its uh, celebration of the Beers of the UK event in Parliament this evening, to which, of course, you are all very, very welcome. Beer and pubs in the UK are a homegrown manufacturing success story. They're represented in every part of our United Kingdom, in every one of our constituencies. 80% of the beer that is brewed by this country's fantastic brewers is consumed in this country. It supports almost 900,000 jobs in all corners of the country, including uh, more than 1,000 in my constituency of Dudley South. Of course I will. I'm grateful to the Honourable Gentleman for giving way and congratulating him on securing this debate. And he's absolutely right about the success story of our pubs and brewing industry. But would he agree with me that we've seen far too many pubs close, frankly, in recent years, and we really do need to value them as community hubs as well? Uh, the Honourable Gentleman couldn't have uh, read my mind more thoroughly if he had a copy of my speech. <laughs> I'd, I'd almost answer that uh, intervention, so I will, of course, give my way. I'm most obliged to him for giving way, and I congratulate him on securing this debate. Can I just amplify the point made? Does he agree with me that in many rural areas, the public house is the heart and soul of the local village? Yeah. Yeah. I'd go further than that. I'd say that in many areas, and not, pure, uh, not only uh, rural areas, the pub is the last service, often the last facility, uh, in, in the town or village. It's often not just a place to drink. It's often the place with the, with the shop where you get your hair cut. It might be the jobs club and any number of other services. I can see the Honourable Lady trying to intervene. Thank you very much uh, for giving way. And the, the plough in Radford, which is in uh, the inner city uh, of Nottingham and also the brewery tap for uh, Nottingham Brewery, is precisely the sort of nucleus of the local community uh, that he described, and the landlady Mel is frankly uh, a legend. Does he agree with the managing director of the Nottingham Brewery, Phil Darby, that when he worries that if action isn't taken on uh, beer duty and small be brewers' uh, relief, that the price of a couple of pints in the pub simply won't be able to compete with the supermarkets for much longer? Uh, the Honourable Lady is absolutely uh, right, and as has already become clear, pubs aren't much more than uh, just a place to, to drink. Uh, the kind of... I, I will give way to the Shadow Minister. <laughs> very, very kind of him. Um, the debate is about taxation of, beer, of pubs and breweries, and I had an email from uh, one of the three excellent small breweries in my constituency, from Les O'Grady, who runs Neptune... A brewery, uh, and he runs a tap there as well, uh, and he makes the point he employs three people. His challenge is the current relief, the taper, and the way that it is uh, very difficult for him to overcome the barrier in growing his business. It is something faced by all small breweries. Does he agree there is a very strong case for pressure to be put on the Treasury to change those rules, to enable these brilliant manufacturers uh, and employers to grow as they wish to? Uh, the small and microbrewers of, of this country have been one of the great success uh, stories of the past 20 years in brewing. They've transformed uh, brewing and beer across the country, both the diversity uh, and, the, uh, and the quality. However, the small brewers relief scheme that was introduced uh, under the previous Labour government, has done a fantastic job in increasing the numbers of... Sm I, if I may just finish this fir first point, in increasing uh, those groups. However, we do now need to be looking at, uh, at the disincentives that, uh, that those thresholds now put in terms of uh, growth, expansion, employing more people. And for example, Black Country Ales, based in my constituency, face exactly the issues to which he refers. That's on my right hand, my friend. <laughs> my honourable friend, giving way and congratulating him on securing this important debate. The points being made by the gentleman on the opposition bench and by 
um, my honourable friend, are exactly right around the importance of the small brewers' tax relief. And does he agree with me that it's not only about changing the shape of the relief curve to remove that barrier to growth for the really successful craft brewers, it's about also maintaining the 50% reduction in duty for the very small craft brewers so they can get a foothold in the marketplace? Uh, my right honourable friend makes a, a very important point. I have a feeling that my honourable friend, the uh, Minister, may just touch on small brewers' relief uh, in his response later because, of course, the Treasury has conducted a review into this matter and I know that we're all looking forward to seeing some of the results of that review, hopefully before too long. <laughs> uh, so, if I can make your way to the Honourable Lady first and then I will come back to thank him for giving way and for bringing this extremely important debate to the House today. Would he agree in addition that we need common sense, rateable values? Our Glassford Inn is under threat of closure due to ridiculous rateable value that's been placed upon it, meaning it would actually have to sell um, a drink to every single person in the village every single night of the week just to actually meet the rates, never mind make any profit and pay the staff, that common sense is needed in this agenda and that we must support our rural pubs to continue. Mm -hmm. uh, the system of non-domestic rates, business rates, is fundamentally a system of local taxation that was built, uh, designed in the 19th century, built on uh, previous like, poor law legislation. It really does not suit the needs and the features of 21st century economy and an increasing, uh, uh, particularly an economy where so much retail is increasingly moving out of town or onto the internet in a way that physical services, and no one has yet designed an effective virtual pub that can serve a virtual beer that is quite as satisfying as the real thing. Um, it's, we are in a position where our community pubs are at, I think, an unfair disadvantage, as she says, uh, to those uh, businesses that can reduce their liabilities. I did promise uh, my honourable friend. I, I thank him for, for giving way of this. I'm, the one, one of the things that I'm most proud about over the last 12 years is that at the beginning of that period, we introduced assets of community value. And if that is done properly, as it has been in my constituency, it has allowed a huge mm. number of pubs to become self-owned by their communities and to continue to prosper. Does he see that as a good way forward? We have some exceptionally good community-run uh, run pubs up and down the country. I uh, visited one in Stafford uh, a, a couple of years ago that, uh, as uh, my honourable friend uh, refers, uh, was on the point of closing down, could easily become derelict, but because of the uh, assets of community value. It was possible for the community to take on to succeed, also seeing them in Twickenham. I have a feeling the Honourable uh, Lady for St Albans may refer to similar uh, uh, schemes in her own uh, constituency later uh, in this debate. But apart, as well as the jobs that are, uh, that are created and supported by the beer and uh, pub sectors, they're a massive contributor to the economy more widely, and of course to the Exchequer, as the Minister uh, will know. Total value to the economy is almost £23 billion. From my own constituency in Dudley South, our, beer, our breweries and pubs contribute £30 million to our local economy. And off that nationally, it pays almost £13 billion into Treasury coffers, which I'm sure that the Minister will be very grateful of uh, ahead of the budget. Sorry. I thank my honourable friend for giving way, but would, would, would you not agree that um, the pub, uh, as you've been describing, is not only a great financial uh, asset to the country, the UK, but it's also a unique selling point for the UK. People come from all over the world to visit our pubs, our rural pubs, right across the country, and that's why we must support them by differential rates. My friend, again, preempts the later part uh, of my speech, but in terms of... Uh, attracting tourists and investment into the United Kingdom, uh, beer and pubs is absolutely one of the top three reasons, where a uh, top three things that tourists into the UK say they want to do whilst they are visiting. Of course, they want to, um, uh, they, they, they want to uh, go out and have fish and chips. They normally want to visit, whether it's Buckingham Palace, whether it's Stratford, some of the heritage. And the third 
a third of those items that always comes up is they want to pint a proper British beer in a proper British pub. Um, He's being incredibly generous. Yeah, too Mr. generous. Gray, because I know he wants to make progress. But I just thought I would ask him to help me put on the record the sheer scale of the attendance at this debate. Yeah. And, to, and to, to say to the minister, clearly he would be incredibly popular yeah. if he would only <laughs> cut tax on beer and pubs. And with that, I'll let my honourable friend make his magnificent yeah. speech. I will. Uh, and there are a lot of people trying to speak, some 17 that I have on my list, uh, and the constant, uh, of course it's up to the honourable member whether he takes interventions or not, but constant interventions means his speech will be very long, and that will be down to maybe five or ten speakers from the back benches. So perhaps we should keep interventions under control a little bit and try and get some more speakers in later on. I will endeavour uh, to follow uh, uh, Mr Gray, because I think my honourable friend makes the point extremely succinctly. I would like to pretend that... I was the big attraction in this debate today that has uh, brought so many members from all sides of the House uh, to, to this debate. Uh, I think it's probably got a little more to do with the quarter of a million people who have signed the Long Live the Local uh, petitions, resulting in nearly 130,000 130, emails being sent from constituents to members of Parliament, so, uh, encouraging them to support our beer and pubs and press for the kind of support that my honourable friend was calling for the uh, Minister to announce. And I know the Minister won't feel himself too uh, confined to, uh, to his briefing and his mandate. Yeah. I'm sure he could go a little <laughs> off piece later. Um, it's not an exaggeration to call the pub an essential part of British life. But the link between beer and pubs is completely inextricable. Seven in ten of the alcoholic drinks sold in pubs are beer, and beer accounts for more than half of a pub's turnover. So a, thr a thriving brewing sector is intimately entwined with successful local uh, pubs. And whilst the statistics, the employment, the economic contribution, even the £100 million raised for charity every year up and down the country by our pubs are extremely impressive, there's so much more to beer in pubs than figures alone. Great British Pub is one of our most loved national institutions, the heart of so many, uh, uh, so many of our communities. You only have to think of the times that may have been stopped for directions within our constituencies, and you're more likely to get directions in terms of turning left at the old cat and then straight on at the red lion rather than referring to a street names. But pubs... Uh, also make a huge difference on social issues. And loneliness and isolation amongst the top social issues facing our society. Pubs do so much to help. I've already talked about the many, many services that pubs offer. And when the pub is the last service, the last facility in the town, and the pub closes, it's not only a place to drink that goes, it is all of those services that go. Visiting Cornwall with the wonderful Pub is the Hub charity in 2018. I saw pubs that were home to convenience stores, to hairdressers and to jobs clubs. And last year, the all-party all parliamentary beer group uh, conducted an inquiry into unlocking pubs' potential, which we should be publishing in the next few weeks, and heard evidence of the social contributions uh, made by pubs in rural and urban areas alike. Pubs providing meals for people with dementia and their partners. Christmas meals for the isolated and lonely. Uh, free meals for older people. Yoga classes, literacy, uh, parents and toddler uh, groups. Pubs really are the original social network, bringing people and communities together. But unlike some more modern social networks, whereas Facebook pays just, just over 1.5% of its UK turnover in tax, pubs typically pay about a third. This averages around £142,000 per year per pub to the exchequer. Now, a large part of this has been said uh, is in the form of business rates. We, the recently announced extension of the pub-specific relief, knocking £1,000 off the bills of pubs uh, with rateable values of less than £100,000, it will help a huge number of particularly smaller uh, pubs, as will the 50% reduction in business rates bills for certain businesses. 
But for pubs, the burden of business rates remains particularly acute because of the way that pub valuations work. Pubs account for 2.8% of all business rate uh, revenues, despite only accounting for 0.5% of rate-paying business turnover. That amounts to an overpayment of £500 million every single year. Pubs pay more in business rates uh, compared to their turnover than any other sector. And this is a basic fairness issue. Every extra pound on the business rates bill, as has been said, makes it harder for a pub to survive, while some sectors of the economy simply do not seem to be paying their fair share. And so we really do need the fundamental review of business rates that the government promised in our man uh, election manifesto, a new system that reflects the realities of the 21st century economy. But the other main tax burden on our beer and pubs is, of course, duty. And beer duty remains much too high. It's much, much higher than in any other major beer-producing country in Europe. In fact, if you bought a pint in each of the five other major beer-producing countries, a pint in Germany, a pint in the Netherlands, one in Spain, one in Belgium, and one in Poland, you would still have paid less duty on those five pints than you would have on just a single pint bought in Britain. Now, whilst successive uh, governments, from the coalition governments to conservative governments, have taken action to limit the impact of beer duty on pubs since abolishing, and I have to call it the hated beer duty escalator in 2013, it, uh, it has saved uh, pubs and pub goers millions of pounds which can be seen in a change in the fortunes uh, of many uh, of our brewers and many uh, pubs. So I hope that the Treasury will go further in offering support for British beer and pubs next month's uh, budget, because keeping a lid on beer prices helps to keep pubs viable. And what's more, taking action to limit beer duty increases sends a positive signal to those quarter of a million supporters of the Longer Live the Local petition not to mention the 25,000 individual pubs who are backing the campaign. And although a cut or freeze in beer <coughs> duty will appear uh, on the Treasury books as a cost, evidence suggests that keeping costs down for brewers and consumers actually leads to increased revenue. I will give away just this one. Giving we, he might wish to remind his colleagues in Treasury, in fact, that there is a very helpful precedent which they may would follow here, and that was when the coalition government cut by two pence the duty rate on spirits. Uh, it was expected at the time that that would, in fact, bring a reduction of, of revenue. In fact, there was a fairly significant increase in revenue as a result of that duty cut. I agree with the gentleman, and indeed there's an even more recent uh, example that excise revenue from beer is up a quarter of a billion pounds compared to Treasury forecasts since 2017-18. And this appears to be largely down to boost to beer and pubs following freezes in duty in 2017 and 2018 budgets. So further action on beer duty in the budget would clearly help uh, boost jobs and investment in beer and pubs, but it's also likely to lead to additional custom that generates the extra uh, extra revenue. So beer duty needs to be at a uh, lower level overall, but within that we need to look at how that beer duty is levied. We need the wider review. Firstly, to look at the operation of small brewers uh, relief and whether it is acting as a disincentive to growth and expansion, but also to look at how uh, beer duty can better support our community pubs rather than stack them high, sell them cheap uh, produce through some off licenses and supermarkets. Now that we've left the European Union, as the implementation period ends at the end of uh, the year, there is an opportunity for the fundamental review in how duty is structured and I would urge the Treasury to look at, uh, uh, at um, how beer duty could be levied at a lower rate for beer likely to be sold in pubs, particularly if it was levied at draft beer, kegs and, uh, uh, and cask, compared to small pack cans and bottles. I think this way of supporting our community pubs uh, without giving you know, the, um, the, the dead cost 
of, uh, of duty cuts to supermarkets, I think, would make a big difference to many community pubs. I know that the number of colleagues and members of all sides here won't need persuading of the intrinsic value of pubs, not just to the economy, but to society as a whole. But as ever, it bears repeating. The pub is in many ways synonymous with the UK. I'm almost finished, but I will give away this last time. I'm very grateful and uh, congratulate him on, on securing this incredibly important debate. Um, alongside what you said about the economic and social value of pubs, does he also agree that the pub is the safest place for drinking to take place, particularly for, for problem drinkers? So actually supporting our pubs has a huge benefit in terms of our health expenditure too. And even, even further than that, uh, research from Professor Dunbar of Oxford University suggests that not only is it safer to drink in moderation in a well-run pub, but if you drink uh, regularly and in moderation in a local pub, you're more likely to be happier, you're more likely to be healthier, your physical health is likely to be better, your mental health uh, is likely to be better. Uh, and so I think whilst you can understand the immediate appeal of the modern temperance movement calling for large increases in duty to try to reduce uh, consumption, the impact of high levels of duty tends to be to move consumption out of well-regulated and licensed premises into uh, to people buying cheap alcohol to consume at home or in public without the protections that a licensed premises uh, provide. So I do think this is a safety issue, a health issue, and a public health issue. So I'm delighted, Mr Gray, to see so many, uh, he, so many here to support great British brewing and pub industries. I hope that... Uh, the Minister will hear the messages of gratitude for the action that has been taken in the past, but also the messages of hope and even of expectation and desire for, of the need for continued support to ensure that brewing and pubs remain viable for many years in the future.